Hello Crafty Llamas! In this video I'll be showing you Cassie Marie's Crocheted Soap Saver. So this is a free pattern that I found on Ravelry which I will link below. It is for a soap saver which is like a soap bag. I thought this would be a fabulous way to show you another way to help reduce your own plastic use. So what I've got for today's project is I have a Coco Knits Maker's Keeper which is like a magnetic bracelet that I'll show you in a second. I've got some stitch markers from Coco Knits. I have a set of stalk embroidery scissors you can see here, they're lovely gold plated scissors. These are really nice, very delicate and very adorable. I've got some cotton double knit yarn and I have a five and a half mil likey crochet hook. So I've got the Maker's Keeper in tangerine. That is the color of the bracelet. So it's a snap bracelet like this and you literally just pop it on your wrist like so and it sits nicely and there's no catch or anything so it's just nice and loose and basically your stitch markers and things will attach to the back of your wrist. Um, I'm just gonna be using the opening stitch markers, those ones, um, and these are the precious metal ones. So in this kind of pack, you get a bunch of the opening stitch markers and then you get a bunch of the round ones which don't open. So I've just got a selection there on the back of my Maker's Keeper. And then I have my, um, like I said, my embroidery scissors, my crochet hook and my yarn. So this pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn. So I'm just going to be using a double knit and I'm going to use both ends of the yarn. So I've got the center fed yarn there and then I've also got the outside one. Um, I will be using American crochet terminology, um, not UK. So do just bear that in mind if you do prefer using UK terminology. So um, I'm going to start with a slip knot like so. Pop my hook in there. I always leave a really long tail just in case. Um, this pattern is worked top down, so we're gonna start right at the very top, um, and then we will also leave a gap to thread the, um, what's it called, like the cord through so that you can tie off your soap bag. So we're gonna start by chaining 24, and then we're gonna slip stitch to form a ring. So I've got one, eight, nine, 23, 24. So I'm just gonna check my stitch count quickly. And what I do is just to help me quickly see how many stitches I've got, I place a stitch marker every 10 stitches. Um, I do this whether I'm working on a short project or a long project. Um, I just find it helps me a lot of the time. So let's just pull up a nice big loop. And it also doesn't really matter if you're um, kind of crocheting quite tight or quite loose on this. Um, it's not really a project where your gauge matters too much as long as you can fit a soap bar in there. I've gone for a slightly larger hook than I would usually just because I don't currently have a five mil in stock that I'd like to use. So I'm using a five and a half. Um, but if it's a bit gappy, it's not the end of the world. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. So I'm just gonna place a stitch mark on my tenth. I believe it was this one. I'm just gonna double check that because I'm not paying loads of attention right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I should have paid more attention because that's only the ninth stitch. So let's move that up one and pop that in here. And then counting on from there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remember that's where I've put my thumb. So you've got 24 stitches and then you just need to slip stitch to join like so. Yeah, if there are any of these stitches that you're unsure about or you just want a bit of a reminder, you can, um, I've got tutorials on all the different stitches um, that you can watch on the YouTube channel, um, which you're probably already on. If not, if you're watching this on my Instagram, then um, they are also all on there. Um, that will be under crochet class. Well, let's just tighten that. Cool, perfect, that is that all done. I'm gonna pop my hook back in that where I've just slip stitched, pull one up, and make that my first single crochet, like so. Right, so I'm just gonna pop stitch marker in that stitch that I've just created. And then you're gonna single crochet for two rounds, 
Right, so I've popped that in, that's my first stitch there, and I'm just gonna single crochet around. So, okay, just keep going around. So these likey hooks are relatively new hooks to my shop, so I've had them at the time of filming probably about a month or so. And um, I hadn't kind of, I'd heard about likey, but they weren't a brand that I'd personally tried out. But I saw a lot of really fabulous reviews online for them and thought, you know what, this is one of those that we need to get in stock for Crafty Llama. So I bought them in, they took a while to arrive. There's um, with COVID and everything, it's taken a little while um, to kind of get everything. But you know, that's the same with most places. Um, so they, they arrived after about a month, six weeks. And um, I have to say, I'm so, so happy that I did buy them in because they are absolutely gorgeous. And I've said this um, on a few social media posts that I've done when, um, I mean, I like to test the products and make sure that, you know, what I'm selling is kind of good quality and that it's, um, you know, suitable and, you know, every hook is slightly different. And so every crochet or like a certain brand. And I think I have found the brand for me. That these likey hooks really are amazing. They are, I mean, all kind of wooden hooks tend to be quite smooth. Um, and they're, you know, they're warm to the touch and, um, you know, they're nice to work with. But what I really love about these um, is that they're, I don't think I've come across a wooden hook this smooth in all honesty. Um, they've kind of got the feel of an aluminium hook in terms of their smoothness and the warmth of a wooden hook, which is really, really nice. And um, they're also really, really light which some wooden hooks can be a bit heavy, especially in some of the larger sizes. But like you've managed to keep them so, so light and they really are fabulous to work with. I've really been enjoying it. I've, um, I used one of their four mil hooks for the Technicolor Shopper that I did. Um, if you haven't seen that, then I've got some pictures on the Crafty Llama Instagram, uh, where you can see what I did with that. It was basically a stash bust busting project. Um, right, that's the end of my first round. So I'll count that. Um, I always recommend counting your stitches at the end of every round just to make sure you've still got the same number because um, stitches have a habit of multiplying and reducing. So I'll just go around and count one, two, three, four, three, and then four with my stitch marker. So I've still got 24, which is great. Um, so it just says single crochet two rounds. It doesn't tell you whether your slip stitch should join or not. I'm going to uh, just carry on in the round and it, that just kind of gives it more of a spiral effect. Um, so the only slip stitch to join that you, that I'll do will be the joining of the circle. So I'm just gonna carry on. So I'm gonna take out this stitch marker briefly just whilst I single crochet into there, like so. So I'm gonna pop that stitch marker back in to mark the first stitch of the round, like so. And then I'm just gonna crochet around. This round should be a lot quicker just because it's a little bit easier to go into these stitches now that they're established rather than on a foundation row. But yeah, as I was saying, these hooks are really, really fabulous. I absolutely love working with them. And one of my favorite things is that they actually have a very pointed tip, uh, which really kind of allow you to get into that stitch nicely. It's quite a short head to the hook, but I have actually found that really really nice to work with and it's also got quite a steep like decline to the the head of the hook but yeah so I've been really really enjoying using them honestly I can't wait for you guys to try them and let me know what you think obviously like I said everyone has kind of a preference of hook whether it's kind of an acrylic and aluminium whatever you whatever it is you prefer or if you prefer an ergonomic hook you know it just varies between people so let me know what you think and if you've tried them what do you think of them is your experience different to mine? It's always good to get some feedback. So the third row, you're going to single crochet two, chain two, skip two. Basically that creates the gaps where you can thread the cord through. So we're gonna start off. Um, I'm just gonna remove the stitch mark of the first stitch and then I'll pop it back in in a sec. There we are. Like 
this side, pop that back in. And then let's say I am single crochet two. So I've done the one, which is the first one, then I'm, here's the second. And then you're gonna chain two, like so. And then you skip two stitches, because obviously you've chained two, that'll be the length of those. So one, two, and then into the third, you're gonna do another two crochet, single crochets. So there's one, and single crochet again, into the next stitch, two, and then you're gonna chain two and just repeat that round. So once again, that just creates these gaps here. And that's one, two, like so. Cool, so what you're now going to do is we are, so you've got your kind of chain two just sat here and you're just gonna leave those for a sec. And so the next row, which is your fourth row, is single crochet one and then single crochet three in the space left by the chain two in the previous row. And you're gonna repeat that round. So we're gonna single crochet one into that first stitch of the round. So you're still skipping those last two stitches and you're just gonna single crochet into that first stitch of the round and then move your stitch marker like so. Right, and then you're gonna single crochet three in the space left by the chain two of the previous row, which is this one here. So what you're doing is you're basically skipping that first stitch and you're just doing three straight into here. So you're still gonna have the same number of stitches, but you're just missing that first one and doing three into the gap. Shuffle that up. That's two. And three into there. So you do that um, five more times. So once again, you're gonna single crochet one, like so. And then you're gonna do three into that chain two space. And then you're gonna do your one, and then your three. Right, there we are. So that's the end of that row. So what that basically does is it almost kind of reinforces those gaps a little bit. If you can see, they're just, um, because you've got um, three in there, you've just made them a little bit sturdier, which is nice. And also it removes the kind of fiddliness of having to go into your chain stitches to try and crochet into those, because that can, in all honesty, it can just be a bit of a ball ache. So um, it's just quite a nice pattern that it does this rather than asking you to crochet into those chain stitches. Um, you use in the space, which I mean, I prefer. So the next row is you're gonna single crochet into the back loop of each stitch for 10 rounds. Um, so what they've written, so one of the pattern notes on here is that it creates a very elastic fabric that will stretch to fit most normal size soap bars, um, which is really, really nice idea. And also it just creates a little bit of a texture by going through the back loop only. So, um, I'm pretty sure I've done a video on this, but if I haven't, I'll also show you quickly on here what it means by the back loop only. So I'm gonna remove this stitch marker for the first one. There we go. Um, what it means by back or front loop is obviously in each V, you've got the front part of the V, which is this one here, and then you've got your back part, which is there. So you've got your back here and your front loop here. So when it says go into the back loop only, it literally just means that one there. And you just single crochet as usual, but just through that one loop. And that essentially, all that does is that leaves the front loop here at the front and it'll create a texture. And I'll show you that texture once we've done a few rounds, um, it'll come up better. I'm just gonna stick that stitch marker back in so I don't lose track of my rounds. Um, I'm also gonna reuse the good old post-it note method of keeping track of my rounds. I've got my llama post-it notes somewhere. Here we go. Because obviously I've got llama post-it notes. Pop that there. And I'll mark down every time I've done a round. So you just go through the back loops. Like I said, 10 rounds. So I will see you back here in a few rounds time once I've done that. So 
So that's the end of the second row. So what you might be able to see here is you've got these stretchy gaps here for your um, cord. And then, let's pull this crochet hook out. Okay, pop that on there. And you can see there's kind of these ridges here and there. And that's basically where you're going in through the back loop only of the previous round. And it creates these lovely little ridges and just a little bit of texture. Um, not too much, just a little extra something, like a visual detail. And so that's where I'm up to at the moment. So I've got another eight rounds to go. Obviously, if you do want to customize this project, what you can do is, if you always buy the same brand of soap, you can either add a couple stitches to your initial, or chains to your initial cast on, or um, chain, foundation chain, um, to make it a little bit larger. Or if you need to add some depth to the bag, you can just do a couple extra rounds of um, single crochet through the back loop, um, just to make it a little bit deeper. So this is a, an easily customizable project if you want to. Um, do make sure that if you are adding to your foundation chain that you do it in multiples of four and then that way this pattern will still work the same. Um, so for example, we chain 24, the next one would be 28 stitches and then 32. And if you just make sure you do it that way, um, you won't have to kind of fiddle around with the pattern, it'll still work exactly the same, you'll just have to do an extra repeat or whatever. So I will see you back here in about eight rounds time. So I've just finished my 10th round of uh, single crochet through the back loop only. Um, so let's pull this out. And so as you can see, you've got this lovely little kind of ridged effect here. and as it said, it's super stretchy on kind of all directions, especially sideways, it's very stretchy, which is nice. So if your soap bar is a little bit, bit larger than your bag, then I'm sure it'll stretch absolutely fine without any issue. So the final round, to close the bottom of the bag, lay the bag flat and single crochet through both sides of the bag. Pull the yarn through the last stitch to create a knot and weave in the ends. So obviously here is your first crochet of the round and then you'll want to find your last crochet of the previous round which is obviously just a little bit fiddly because it's just quite tight but if you can just oh, pop that three like that. You've got to be a little bit forceful just to begin with at least and just pull that three like so and single crochet that closed. And then you just carry on along and it will be easier this time because you're not, it's not gonna be quite as tight a fit, like so. That, and you just keep going along. So you just marrying up those two stitches from either side of your fabric. So your next one is here. And then there, like so. You just go along the bottom, that just closes it, and you won't really be able to tell. It's just a bottom seam to your fabric that you've created. There we go. I find it easier if I just create a bit of a gap between both sides of the fabric, um, just so that you can go in one and then find where your opposing stitch is rather than trying to go through both fabrics at once. Just do one at a time, like that. This bit's going to be a little bit fiddly, so I'm just gonna try to pull that fabric apart again so I can get both stitches. And just use my nail, like, Oh. So there you have that. I'm just going to, this is where my trusty embroidery scissors come in. Like I said, they're really, really cute. Um, little stalks and pull that up. Have a nice long tail, snip that yarn 
and then um, you can either pull it straight through or you can yarn over and pull three to create a little knot just to secure that in place at the bottom like that like so pull that nice and tight like that so then you have your essentially very nearly finished bag and that is your bottom seam all right so here i have my jumbo dining needles from clover i'm using a jumbo one just because i've got the yarn held double um it's just a little less fiddly trying to get it through one of the larger needle eyes and thread that through and all i'm going to do is i'm going to turn my bag inside out briefly just so that i sew it in the right side Right, find that corner, thread it through, push it up. Oh, I've just done done that. Yep, that's still in the right place. Like that. I'm just going to sew it in on this side of the fabric. I'm not going to do an amazing job of sewing in. Um, I'm very lazy when it comes to weaving in my ends or sewing in my ends. To be honest. Um, okay. Right, so I'm just going to sew in the foundation chain ends. So I'm just going to make sure my yarn is the right length or the same length. And then all I'm going to do is um, this is kind of like a, a secret. Um, or it's almost like an invisible join, to be honest, um, which works really well if you've crocheted. So this end works well for kind of edges and stuff. You just go in the stitch one way, go through both Vs underneath, and then you go back through the previous one on the other side. And essentially all it does is it creates its own V, which basically, basically makes it invisible. As this is a foundation chain cast on it, it's a, um, it's a twisted edge, so it doesn't really make that much difference. That's just a technique that I like to use because I find it nice and secure. And I'm just going to, I'm going to secure that at the back with a knot. So, and then just trail that down a little bit just so that it's sorted securely. So. Okay, and I'm just going to snip that off. Like that. And then you can ever so slightly see my join is just there. There's a slight dip, if you can see, it's just there. But realistically, it's not really too visible. If you do want, you can just kind of pull that out a little bit more so it's less of an obvious dip in your stitches at the top. And so the last thing we need to do is create the drawstring. Um, so our, you can either do the drawstring in the same one or I'm going to use a slightly different colour because I love combining different colours. And so I'm going to use this lovely yellow that I'm a big fan of. Once again, I'm just going to hold it double to create a worsted weight yarn. And so it asks you to chain until you have a length of about 12 inches. So we're going to be going for a little while. Um, and six. Cool. So what you want to do now is. Um, Pull the end of the yarn through that last stitch to create a knot, like so, like that, nice and tight, and that just creates a little knot. There we go. And then, pull the one that would be getting tight as well. You're just going to weave this through the gaps. So it depends also where you want your um, drawstring to sit. If you want it at the side, then you'll just make sure that your kind of one of your ends is there. So, and then knot your two ends together. Like that. Just 
make sure that's nice and tight and there's plenty of space there still so that's not pulling too much and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my scissors and just snip make sure those knots are really tight at the end yep snip as close to that as possible there we go there we are lovely and there is my finished soap bag. I just need to take these stitch markers out that I used right at the beginning to mark every 10 on there. And on this side, this is very looking very Ikea, but I don't mind. I quite like blues and yellows anyway, so it's not a problem. And then as you can see, all you'd have to do is pop your soap in there, pull it, and then you can just pop another knot like so, just to keep it nice and tight and secure. There we go. So that's it for my finished Cassie Marie's crocheted soap saver bag. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do let me know by commenting below and liking it. We do have weekly videos, so please do subscribe to my channel. Our social media handle is Crafty Llama UK, so you can find us on various platforms using that. Please do tag us if you attempt anything from this video, and of course you can purchase all of the tools used in this video from our shop, which I will link below. That's it for this week's video, but I'll be back with you next week for another one. Bye!